in the business when Rene Rifkin has been in the eye of the media for years. Well known for his Midas touch, Rifkin has acquired celebrity status in recent times. We take a close look at the man behind the financier. I realise because people tell me I'm a celebrity uh, that there must be something to it. But equally I don't understand why a stockbroker is a celebrity. To me celebrities are people who are opera singers, or actors, or ministers of the crown, they're celebrities. I, I've sort of looked at it, I'm the only stockbroker in the world in any city that appears to be a celebrity, I don't know why. Whilst Ripken ponders over his celebrity status, there are others who believe he thrives on media attention, whether it is talking about his shares on the stock market or his extravagant taste for jewellery. He himself has admitted that he is a, a publicity carnivore or a media carnivore and, and he certainly has played the pursuer in terms of the media and um, when I interviewed him for Australian Style, he did confess that when he goes overseas it's, he, he misses the, um, the publicity and the attention that he generates in his local territory of Australia. However, Rifkin disagrees with this opinion. There's been nothing done to cultivate celebrity status. I live my life as I want to. Rene Rifkin isn't always happy to speak to whoever knocks on his door. He refused to do an interview with Ali Cromie, who wrote a controversial piece on him and his friends for BRW. In fact, his employees at Rifkin Group have been given specific instructions not to speak to her. Why do you think a story on Rene Rifkin's friends would be of any interest? Because people love to know about Rene Rifkin. He's a larger than life figure. So people want to know about everything that he does. And they want to know the other side of Rene Rifkin. They used to all the midday show programs, the current affair programs, the ones that get Rene saying what he wants to say. Now, not used to an independent look at Rene Rifkin, which tells them something that Rene doesn't want them to know. One thing that Rene Rifkin has been known to do is to help people who are down and out. A lot of people who work here started life on the wrong side of the track. I get a great thrill of helping people from the wrong side of the track. And so it's a wonderful feeling. Dave Panizzuti, one of Rifkin's employees, might or might not have been on the wrong side of the track. But if Rifkin had not entered his life, he would have been in Byron Bay doing nothing. What is it about Rene Rifkin that keeps you hanging on? Okay, that's a very good question. Uh, the fact that he can offer a good future and for someone like myself who probably doesn't have as much qualifications as it takes to get out there in, the, in other corporate say, situations, Rene is the type of person that's prepared to sort of stick by a person. He's loyal? He's very loyal, yeah. And uh, if you show loyalty to him, then by all means it'll be the same to you. lifestyle that only the rich can afford. Putting a helipad on this $5 million boat may seem ridiculously extreme, but to Rifkin, this is just another example of his insatiable desire to spend. You can stop working right now and live a lavish life. I can live a lavish life, but not as lavish as I live. Why not? Well, because my lifestyle is very, very expensive. And also because my mind uh, is not... Uh, a mind that can sit and do gardening, I'm not the sort of person. Uh, basically, I'm semi-retired. I spend a lot of time on my boat anyway. I'm not in the office uh, all day. I'm here when I feel like it. I'm not here when I don't feel like it. I see people when I feel like it. I don't see people when I don't feel like it. I've got the best life of any person in this country. But even a man as powerful as Rifkin cannot stop the media from exploiting his name. When one of his sons accidentally crashed his scarab, it made headline news. Well, it's ridiculous because the boat had about $40,000 worth of damage, no one was injured. I wasn't on the boat, no one was drunk, there was no story to be told, but the newspaper writes about it. I guess they write about it because I am perceived to be a celebrity. Because you had to be a big shot, didn't you? You had to open up your mouth. You had to be a big shot, didn't you? All your friends were so knocked out. You had to have the last word last night to know what Everything is about. You had to have a white hot spot. Thanks, you had to be a big shot.